PK52, the Saturday morning meeting. Challenge you to go back a couple of weeks and watch my series on opportunity versus luck. It's interesting how people look at those two things. If you're just sitting there and something falls in your lap and you weren't expecting it and you didn't do anything to get in the way of it, maybe that is luck. But the most of the time, we call the word luck, it's really the word opportunity. So wintertime's coming. We've already had some snowstorms earliest in the season for a long time. And people move indoors. A lot of people service their cars right before winter because you do not want to have an issue with your vehicle when weather turns bad. So that service customer becomes one of the biggest customers that we can source on the new car and pre-owned side for sales associates. I think this needs to be coordinated with the management of the dealership, but we need to really have an aggressive equity mining department. There are a lot of people right now that do not need a second car or a third car in the family. Believe it or not, there's a lot of people that are still working from their home and they're not driving their car. The average person drives about 15,000 miles a year and you, you got a RAV4 sitting in somebody's neighborhood that they've been in like three times in the last three months. And so this is going on everywhere. The customers are unaware if they will let go of that vehicle right now that in some situations we're paying more money for that vehicle than they paid for it when they bought the vehicle. That's how big a demand Toyota pre-owned vehicles are in the market right now. Every single place is featuring Toyota cars because they hold their value and in this time they become the go-to vehicle for every used car outlet. So make sure that we have somebody talking to each and every customer. Look at the service history list for the week. I see I've got 15 RAV4s coming in. If RAV4 is the target vehicle, then I need to talk to every one of those people and I need to be courteous. That's the key. You've got to be courteous and go in, say, explain to them why you're having a conversation. That's first and foremost. You know, I noticed you're bringing your RAV4 in. One of the things going on in the market right now is we are having so hard time sourcing new cars because of the chip shortage and because of some shipping issues. And so the demand for pre-owned vehicles are at an all-time high and the RAV4 happens to be the most demanded vehicle out there. If you're even close to considering trading or selling your RAV4 right now, then I'd like to have a discussion with you. If that customer comes back and says, no, you know, you know we're gonna keep that RAV4, then understand that, I understand that. Um, can I ask you, when are you thinking about moving out of that RAV4? A customer comes back and says, probably after tax season next year. So that's going to be March through May of next year. What they've done is they've told you how long they're going to keep the vehicle. That's why the dealerships have a CRM. So you place that customer in the CRM with some information to refresh your memory in January. Call the customer up. I know I'm a couple of months ahead. You said after tax returns, we're still having a hard time sourcing new cars. I want to make sure that I got the car exactly like you want. So I'm giving myself 90 days to be able to find the right car for you. Can we get started? So what my goal for all of you to be is instead of finishing a month and selling everything you could sell and rallying to that month end close, which we've done since the beginning of time, I'd like you to be able to show me in the CRM how Two years from now, every single month of the year, you already have people committed to trading their car at that time because you listen to them and you use the technology. Wouldn't it be great after a year of doing this to have two or three or four years worth of committed customers that said they were going to buy on this date and you're calling them in advance showing them that you never forgot them and you work for them. If you will work within the, the, the four walls of your dealership, Look, here's a number for you right here. This was last year. Last year in Toyota dealerships, and we only have 1,238 Toyota dealerships. We wrote 30,123,717 repair orders. These people came in, signed a legal document, allowing us to work on their car. We know the history of their car, we know the background of the car, and we know the client 30 million times. And so each and every one of those customers Somewhere along the way, we should find out how long they're going to keep this vehicle and when we'll be able to put them in another vehicle in a non-aggressive conversational way. And when a customer says, I'm buying X day, everybody wants to sell a car today. I get it. Too busy today. Got to look out the window today. And this really is a today business. Unfortunately, not every day is today today. Six months from now, when you wake up in the morning, it will be today. And so I don't care whether the customer's buying right now or the customer's buying a year from now, as long as I've been courteous enough 
and let them know that I'll be taking care of their account and I've earned them as a client. Each and every day, sell the cars you can sell, talk to the people you can talk to, but figure out a way to be able to introduce yourself to multiple people every day. The more people in your market that know who you are and what you do, the more cars you're going to sell. PK52, the Saturday morning meeting.